Welcome everyone. It's a blessing to be here and a privilege to speak God's word to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory, Lord, and we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you for the cleansing of all of our sins, Lord God, and thank you for the victory over death that we now share, Heavenly Father, as we put our faith in what you did for us on the cross. We ask that you continue to pour out your Spirit upon us and fill us with the Holy Spirit, that we can do your work according to your plan and your will. We pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon everyone listening to this sermon today. And above all, myself, let it not be my words, but your words that are spoken through me. Use me as the vessel, Lord God, and open up the ears of the people who are listening, that they might receive this word in a way that is pleasing to you. And above all, Lord God, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Very strange day today, it feels like. I don't know what it is. Certainly the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon us here today. But something just seems a little different. Not sure what it is. But anyway, the scripture that the Spirit pointed me to today, originally I thought this was going to be about forgiveness, but then the Spirit moved me to look at uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Um, I might say, uh, I started to think that maybe the Spirit wanted me to read this whole um, uh, chapter. But no, or not chapter, but you know, the whole verse 53. Uh, but no, he didn't. He just said, go to verse number five. And I will read from God's word. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Obviously speaking of Jesus, the prophecy here. 700 years before he came to earth. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. We took all, he took all the penalty, pain, and suffering, and correction, everything that would have been given to us, or we would have had to have taken upon ourselves for our works and deeds of sin. Jesus bore for us and took upon him. And then the next verse is what resonated with me. Because a lot of people are dealing with all sorts of health issues. Mm -hmm. And it says, and by his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. Praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. By his stripes we are healed. By what he did on the cross mm -hmm. and the shedding of his blood and what that does for us. We are healed by that. We can claim victory in what he did on the cross for us. Because it was a finished work. We learn in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. When he was finished with that work. He said. Not only did he go and sit down at the right hand of God. But he said. All authority in heaven and on earth. Has been given unto me. Mm -hmm. By his authority. And by the work that he did on the cross. We can now claim healing. If we align ourselves with his word and we align ourselves with what he did on the cross by putting our faith in that <laughs> and that alone. Not somehow creating a new Jesus. Not by committing spiritual adultery or some other form of, of salvation or sanctification or glorification of the Lord. There's only one thing God asked of us. And that's to put our faith in what his son did for us. If we choose to put it in anything else, anything else, he will not receive it. And it actually speaks very lowly of what we think of as far as what Jesus did for us. How can we even take a stance in opposition when we know at conversion, what he did for us. So if you need healing, put your faith in what he did. And by God's word, you will get it if you follow what Jesus tells us. 
What does he tell us? He said, if you want to come after me, I want to say it again, because I have to say it to myself many times. You must deny yourself. As a believer, I can't tell you how many times I have surrendered my will and confessed the sin and surrendered my will to the Lord. I've done it on numerous occasions. Amen. Each time I do it, however, it's a deeper layer, a much deeper layer of commitment. It's almost as if I'm more humbled, I'm more desperate, I'm more helpless each time I do it. And it's in that helplessness that God wants us. Because there and only then are we ready to truly submit and be 100% reliant on Him. So at those times when I do that, we know one thing. It's like my wife said. We were going through this upcoming study. And knowing there was a symptom that appeared that normally is a troubling symptom and means something is wrong. But we prayed on it. And we're already surrendered our will to the Lord. Yes, there's spiritual warfare. We have our moments where the flesh wants to rise up. But we know where to go. The first thing we do is we deny ourselves. That's the flesh. Because it's the flesh that starts rising up and wants to take matters into its own hands and create a strategy and a plan to overcome. But Jesus is the overcomer, not us. We can't do it. If we could do it on our own, there was no need for him to die on the cross. Why would he go through all of that for us? The pain, the suffering, the humiliation. All that he went through, the suffering. Why? Yes, he asked the Lord, could the Lord take this cup from him? And he bled tears of blood. The man Jesus. A lot of times we don't want to have to go through the chastisement. We don't necessarily like what God has planned for us, his purpose for us. We fear it sometimes. But until you can trust God and just say, Lord, Take me as a vessel. Take me as a sin offering. I am yours, Almighty God. Mm -hmm. There's surrender. And now, but after all of that, we prayed, we believed, I claimed it, my wife claimed it. Yes, there were moments of doubt, but once again, deny ourselves, go to that cross. Remind and reaffirm what Jesus did for us on that cross. Mm -hmm. The victory was a complete victory over sin, over death, the world, and self. Believe. Have faith. And now, after all of that, what is there to do? But to rest in Christ. And by that, you allow the Holy Spirit to take over and you let God fight the battle. You know how hard it is to sit there on your hands and let God fight a battle for you? When you got the devil bombarding you in your mind, the flesh trying to rise up and take over and do something about it? Very hard. But we resisted. Of course, in this instance, what else could we do? I'm going to come to one moment where you can actually do other things. But we did. We had nothing else to do. All we had was our faith. We claimed it. And it all turned out well. Praise A miracle happened mm -hmm. that day. And if you have spiritual wisdom and understanding, you will believe and understand what I said. If you're not a believer, it's just coincidence. That's all it is. But anyway. So after all of that, the next day, my wife sent me a text at night. Every once in a while we text each other back a little message here and there. A little love note a lot of times, but sometimes it's just something that the Spirit puts on our mind. And I read it the next day and it said, test will come, a test will come at the height of a blessing or right after one. And I said to myself, you know, she's right. We know she's right. But I didn't think much about it. 
Because at this point, I was on a roll. Because I always, before we went, she went to the surgery or whatever, I, I had already surrendered and I just, in a state of complete helplessness, had confessed and turned it over once again, but at a deeper level. Uh, because we had no one else. And uh, we were blessed. So I was in a good place. And certainly resting in Christ and being led by the Spirit. And then as that next day transpired, it wasn't until the afternoon that the test came, you see. But the thing about this test was I had choices. <laughs> I had choices. And the test I'm talking about is when people poke you or when conditions and situations poke you. And your natural flesh inclination is to do something, to say something. And then the more you think about it, the more you feel justified in doing what you believe is the right thing. And when you really analyze it, it is the right thing. It may be defending someone else who's being bullied or the circumstances are such that whoever is saying what they're saying and doing what they're doing is just wrong. And you know in your heart and soul what you're doing or want to do is righteous and holy. But I'm going to tell you, if you keep going with that, you're going to end up doing something. You're going to end up taking matters into your own hand. You will have convinced yourself that God is signing off on it because it's the righteous and holy thing to do. And you can just about go venture on a crusade to retake Jerusalem. <laughs> okay. And no, and everyone tell you, yeah, you did the right thing. But then, you know, in the midst of all of that, I'm going back and forth because I know. I said, wait a second, no, I can't. I can't. I gotta let God fight this battle. I deny myself, I go to the cross, I'm going back and forth, and I'm just I'm beating myself up a little bit, you know, five minutes of in the right place, five minutes, and not in the right place, and going back and forth and back and forth. You know, boy, you can go like that all night. Spiritual into, battles. Into the next morning. Yes, you can. But then in the midst of, but I, I didn't succumb to it, not one bit. I continued to fight that spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. and I prayed. And one thing I realized when I pray now as I've completely gone to this new level of surrender of my will, I find myself praying more because I really don't have anything else I can do but pray. Mm -hmm. Before, there were a thousand different things I could do on my own that would negate having to pray about anything. And then after I finished doing what I'm doing, I might put a complimentary prayer on top of it just to make sure, you know, I was good. But I find myself, I, all I can really do is pray. But I'm praying in the Spirit, and I'm putting my quest before the Lord, and I'm resting in Him, and I'm allowing Him to take that prayer and entwine it within His will and His plan and His purpose, and I'm allowing Him to fight the battle for me. That's the spiritual warfare that we're fighting. That's the response that we need to have. Because more often than not, what we think or what we perceive as the reality in the future, we have no clue what's going to happen or how God's going to react or act on this. We just think we need, he needs our help. Or we might be afraid of his plan and his will for us. It might be another chastisement, another testing. So there's a lot of things going on here. But anyway, I pray. And the Lord took me to a specific scripture. And it's Isaiah verse, or chapter 40, verse 31. And it says, But those who wait on the Lord. You see, we can hear scriptures a lot of time. And I've, take, I've seen this scripture on posters. I've written it down. I've used it in sermons. This scripture is used many, many times. And I've heard those who wait on the Lord, and I just felt like, yeah, hey, okay, we wait for God, you know. Right. But it didn't resonate. But when the Lord took me here this time, I realize now what that means to wait on the Lord. 
There's one thing to take matters into your own hand and then wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Or to wait on the Lord and still take matters into your own hand. Mm -hmm. And you think you're waiting because you haven't, you haven't really done all you could have done or you didn't do it the way you would have done it in the other side of your flesh in the past. Mm -hmm. But truly, what it says here, wait on the Lord. And as I had surrendered my will, fighting the spiritual warfare, but I still surrendered my will and would not take matters into my own hands, it finally dawned on me what it meant to wait on the Lord. To wait on the Lord means to turn it over to Him mm -hmm. and just wait to see what He does. To wait on the Lord. That's waiting on the Lord. And now what else do the scriptures say? But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You see, when we wait on the Lord, we shall renew our strength because we're in the spirit and we haven't succumbed to the temptation of the enemy. They shall renew their strength. And I felt it was renewing. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. There's a metaphor, like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I realized what that meant. I will carry on in my day being filled and led by the Spirit. But I will run if I need to, but I will not grow weary. I will walk in the Spirit and I will not faint. My strength will be renewed and I will carry on waiting on the Lord, knowing that He will have the victory for me in his time and his purpose. And I will stand on my faith in the cross, rest in Christ, and claim the victory in his name, and pray as much as I need, knowing that, yes, if I just wait on the Lord, victory is guaranteed and assured. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.